we're in. We're rolling. Hi, I'm Alice. And I'm Greg. And today we're here in San Angel at the studio slash living space of Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. You can see it behind us. And what I find pretty interesting is that they're completely separate structures joined by a footbridge. And uh, at one point you could go down these like kind of hairy scares. Scare. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the hairy scares in this picture. They're no longer in use. It's hard to imagine Frida with her limited mobility being able to use those. The outside of the house is lined with cactus. Those spines provide the only protection from intruders as there's no other fencing around the building. Diego got a street. But where's Frida Street? The studio houses were commissioned by Diego Rivera in 1931 and designed by his friend, the architect Juan O'Gorman. Juan O'Gorman completed the project by 1932, but at the time of its completion, Diego and Frida were living in the United States. They moved in in 1934 after their return. Inspired by the functionalist ideas of Le Cubusier, Juan O'Gorman's radically modern design for the Casa Studio of Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo created a furor of controversy when it was constructed in the ultra-wealthy, uber-traditional enclave of San Angel in the early 1930s. Conceived as a floating factory of ideas, the two studios are colored red and blue for Diego and Frida, and as a reference to the colors of the Templo Mayor. The first floor houses a few of the smaller pieces of Diego's pre-Columbian artifacts. Diego amassed a huge collection which was later moved to the Anahuacali. We have another video on the Anahuacali which we'll link here. Rivera was greatly influenced by the study of these pre-Hispanic figurines. We made our way up to the second floor to look at some of Diego's own work. <laughs> this poem, written by Frida to Diego, really shows that Diego is Frida's universe, at least while she was writing this poem. The Casa Estudio is an intimate look into the way these artists lived and worked. The bed and bedroom are small and sparse, for someone who probably didn't spend a lot of time in bed. Unless it was with one of his many lovers, it's known that Diego Rivera used this bedroom for his illicit trysts. The large hanging paper mache skeletons were awesome. I immediately felt a connection to this room because I have loved paper mache skeletons and devils since I was a teenager. They reminded me of paintings by Frida where these esqueletos figure prominently, and also the value and respect Diego and Frida had for Mexican folk art. It's thrilling to be able to stand in the studio where Diego Rivera created some of his masterpieces, including this portrait of the famous Mexican actress Dolores del Rio. There's a collection of Judas figures in this room. They're made of paper mache or cartoneria, and they represent Judas Iscariot. They're meant to be draped with fireworks or sometimes stuffed with fireworks and blown up or burned on feast days. They're typically burned on Holy Saturday or Sabado de Gloria during the Catholic Easter season. In this painting entitled Four Inhabitants of Mexico, Frida has included a Judas figure representing Diego, a pre-Hispanic clay figurine, and a cartoneria skeleton alongside an infant Frida. That's a torito hanging from the ceiling. They're usually seen atop someone's head. The little cage surrounding the bull is covered with fireworks. <laughs> ¶¶ 
Diego Rivera created over 3,000 works here, mostly portraits and studies for larger works. Between 1934 and his death in 1957, Diego spent most of his time here, when he wasn't traveling or working on location. Diego Rivera once said, In the pre-Hispanic world, everything in the life of the people was artistic, from the palaces and temples, which are monumental works of sculpture, with their magnificent frescoes that amaze everyone peering at them in the jungle, down to the most humble pot used daily, and the children's toys, and the stone to grind grain. Everything was a work of art, 99% of the time a masterpiece. We reluctantly left Diego's studio and made our way to the third floor. There's a great open view of the studio from above and a small office with a desk, phone, typewriter, and more pre-Columbian art. The office door leads to the rooftop and there's that footbridge we told you about, which connects the two houses. The architect Juan O'Gorman named this bridge somewhat fancifully, the Bridge of Diego and Frida's Love. Because the staircase connecting the two houses was closed, we had to walk back down and go outside to get into the smaller blue studio. The staircase feels like you're inside a caracol, or snail shell which seems fitting since snails sometimes appear in Frida's paintings. There's not a whole lot of Frida's work here. I imagine most of it's housed in other museums, like the Museo Dolores Olmedo, which has 25 of her pieces. Frida's own blue house in Coyoacán has a smaller collection than Olmedo's, but the blue house definitely provides more insight into the artist's life. You don't get a lot of Frida from this museum, except in one room. This bathroom is the birthplace of one of Frida's most famous paintings, What the Water Gave Me. What the Water Gave Me was painted in 1938, and in it we see events from Frida's life which seem to have floated to the surface of her bath water, here in this very same tub. Frida spent time at both the house in San Angel and her family home in Coyoacán. If you're a Frida fan, this location will not have enough of her to satisfy true fans. Instead, we recommend you visit her Casa Azul in Coyoacán and the Dolores Olmedo Museum, where you can see more of her paintings. There's also a big immersive Frida Kahlo exhibit in CDMX at the moment. Alice and I have been Frida fans for a long, long time, so we will probably go. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a video of that visit. Or better yet, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you'll know when we've uploaded a new video.